Top Gun landed in theaters in 1986 and set Tom Cruise's career soaring. Here are the coolest secrets and behind-the-scenes details of this high-flying classic. Top Gun stars Tom Cruise as Pete Maverick Mitchell, a fearless young fighter pilot with something to prove. Did you know it took director Jerry Bruckheimer sending Cruise up in an actual fighter plane to prove to him he should do the movie? Bruckheimer said, so they, meaning the Navy, take Tom up there and they do 5Gs, they do barrel rolls, they do everything. He's heaving in the plane, he gets on the tarmac, runs to a payphone, and he said, I'm in, I'm doing the movie, I love it, this is great. The pilot flying the plane on Cruz's first flight was Lieutenant Commander Lloyd Bozo Abel. When Cruz finally reached for a sick bag, Bozo did a maneuver that put Cruz's head to the floor of the cockpit. When Bozo finally leveled the plane out, Cruz hit the intercom to complain, to which Bozo replied, sorry, but then again they don't call me Bozo for nothing. But for someone named Bozo, there was no clowning around when he did one of the most dangerous stunts in the whole movie. No one had ever performed a flyby or a buzz the tower at Miramar before. In fact, the pilots drew straws to see who would get the privilege and Lieutenant Commander Abel won the day. Michael Ironside, the actor who plays the unflappable Lieutenant Commander Rick Jester Heatherly, was also at the hangar that day. According to Ironside, the plane flew so low he could actually see into the cockpit as it flew by. He said it was one of the most spectacular things he'd ever seen. And there's another cool behind-the-scenes moment with Ironside, too. In the DVD commentary, Michael Ironside shares a story about the fun he had convincing actual naval officers of his character's executive officer rank. He heard someone running below decks and decided to make his presence known. When the running sailor saw Ironside, they saluted him and slowed down until they were out of his line of sight, at which point they started running again. The sailor never knew that Ironside was just an actor. That is, of course, until they went to see the actual movie. It seems like everyone went to see Top Gun, too. It was the number one box office draw of 1986. Over the years, it's grown as a classic, but there's one place where people are not too enthused with the movie's staying power, and that's the real Top Gun school. Don't go making references or reciting famous lines from the movie there. The school actually imposes a $5 fine to any staff member that quotes the film. Better be careful of the call sign you choose, too. Speaking of call signs, have you met Viper? In the movie, Commander Mike Viper Metcalf is played by the cool and collected Tom Skerritt. But that's not the Viper I'm talking about. Watch the Officers Club scene after the famous Righteous Brothers sing-along and just after Charlie shoots Mav down. See the older guy in the booth wearing the yellow shirt? That's Viper. The real Viper. Rear Admiral Pete Pettigrew, United States Navy Reserve. More than just a background player in the movie, this former naval aviator and Top Gun instructor was the technical consultant of the film. And there's another amazing fact about Viper. In the early drafts of the script for Top Gun, Maverick's name was Evan Mitchell. Evan's name was changed to Pete. Where do you think we're going with this? That's right, the name change was a homage to Pete Pettigrew. Speaking of homages, you're gonna love this next Easter egg. In 2013, Pixar took us where cars couldn't go to the skies with the animated feature planes. Remember a couple of military planes by the name of Bravo and Echo? Take a close look at their helmets. Look familiar? They're the same helmets worn by Iceman and Goose from Top Gun. Their tributes don't stop there. Listen to their voices. Unknown rider, you have entered restricted airspace. What are you doing out here with an empty tank? Yeah, it's the same actors from Top Gun. Val Iceman Kilmer plays Bravo, and Anthony Goose Edwards is Echo. Nick Goose Bradshaw is Maverick's best friend and confidant. If you ask him, he also takes a mean Polaroid, which he does in the classic opening scene where Maverick flies upside down over an enemy fighter. So how do they accomplish such a dangerous stunt? Hit that pause button on the shot of both planes and really study it. Look at the lettering on Mav and Goose's plane, and you'll see it's reversed. I guess they should have shot the plane from the other side before flipping the footage. So chalk it up to Hollywood trickery. But this raises the question of whether the stunt can really be done without camera tricks. According to the Blue Angel stunt squadron, yes, and then some. Check out this shot taken in mid-air of the Blue Angels performing a super dangerous formation called a double farvel. But the stunts aren't the only iconic moment to come out of Top Gun. Kelly McGillis plays Charlotte, Charlie Blackwood, Maverick's flight instructor and love interest. Combine McGillis and Cruz with the aching synth sound of Berlin's Take My Breath Away and you've got quintessential movie love, 80s style. Their chemistry was so strong, they appeared together on the iconic original movie poster. But did you know that after the first private screening of the film, the studio wanted more? That's how the patio scene came into being. It was quickly filmed at Paramount Studios using a concrete patio and the actors got the opportunity to improvise. It wasn't their first opportunity, however. After Charlie recklessly chases Maverick down in her car, she tells Maverick that she didn't want anyone to find out she was falling for him. 
Tom Cruise actually had more dialogue but forgot his lines and impulsively kissed Kelly McGillis instead. Director Tony Scott liked it so much he left the scene like that. But unlike an impromptu kiss, a film like Top Gun has many action sequences that take painstaking preparation in order to get the shots needed safely and successfully. Even so, tragic accidents do happen. Art Scholl was a 54-year-old stunt pilot who flew a camera plane for the film. At one point, the plane failed to recover from a flat spin. Over his radio, Scholl was heard saying, I have a problem, I have a real problem, before his plane crashed into the Pacific Ocean. Scholl and his plane were never recovered, and the exact reason for the crash was never determined. In tribute to the fallen pilot, Top Gun was dedicated in his memory. But even with the danger involved, it hasn't stopped Tom Cruise from taking on some of the most dangerous ones himself including in the upcoming Top Gun Maverick. At almost 60 years old, he's still defying death in some over-the-top stunts. And if the guy has a rest mode, it's probably when he's straddling the seat of his motorcycle. But did you know that before Top Gun, Cruz had never ridden a motorcycle? To prep for the film, he went to the House of Motorcycles in El Cajon, California, and they taught him how to ride in the parking lot of their shop. Everybody has to start somewhere. You'll have to be quick since this next detail is one where if you blink, you'll miss it. At the end of the final mission, Maverick looks out over the ocean with Goose's dog tags in hand, and in a moment of acceptance and release, he throws the tags to the waves. But hold on a minute there. Wind that back and take a good look at those dog tags close up. If you flip the shot, it looks like the tags read, does that say Metcalf on top? Uh-oh, Viper's going to be very upset. The Tom Skerritt Viper, that is, not Pete Pettigrew. I guess the prop master wasn't counting on a close-up of the dog tags for the scene. Hard as this was to catch, you might have to be a flight engineer to notice this next one. In the opening flight sequence, Maverick and Goose are in pursuit of a bogey that turns out to be not just one but two secret MiG-28s. Remember when Goose yells, no one's been this close? That may not be entirely accurate. Look at the following scene in Commander Jordan's office. In the background is a photo of the same model aircraft and framed no less. Though, of course, it was an F-5 in real life which were the aggressor planes used in the real Top Gun school for training, painted black to make them more hostile on screen. But speaking of bogeys, the term bogey stands for an unidentified aircraft. In Top Gun, you'll hear the enemy fighters being referred to as bogeys even after the crafts have been identified, which also is not entirely accurate. When a craft is ID'd, it can be categorized in three ways. Friendly, bandit for an enemy aircraft, or hostile for an enemy aircraft that can be fired upon. Speaking of firepower, did you ever wonder how Hollywood was cleared to film firefights in naval airspace? The Navy only authorized two real missile shots to be filmed for Top Gun. Each shot was captured from multiple angles and was used repeatedly during the dogfight sequences. You can pick the shots out because the plane firing the missile is holding a steady altitude and heading, which would never happen in a real dogfight. The rest of the action sequences were created with miniatures, but those miniatures were so effective that the Department of the Navy conducted a preliminary investigation into whether any extra missiles were secretly fired for the filmmakers. Of course, the filmmakers had the utmost respect for the Navy, but one performer crossed the line and paid the consequences. Rick Rossovich plays Ron Slider Kerner in the film Iceman's Radar Intercept Officer. During production, he felt the disciplinary actions of the armed forces firsthand. According to the DVD commentary, Rossovich was assigned a bunk close to the nuclear reactors that powered the ship. The situation made him uncomfortable, so he moved to an open bunk elsewhere. When the officer assigned to that bunk engaged him, Rossovich mouthed off, which led to a visit to the captain, who ordered him thrown off the ship for disrespect. And he's not the only actor on the film who had some issues. Actor Val Kilmer plays Tom Iceman Kazansky, Maverick's top competition. It's hard to imagine anyone else in the part, but if you ask Kilmer in the time, he wanted nothing to do with it. Having just finished Juilliard, he felt the script was silly and didn't approve of the glorification of war. However, he was obligated to audition as his agent also happened to represent Tom Cruise. He even tried to bomb the audition, but his aloofness actually won him the part. And now Iceman is one of the most memorable roles of his career. And there's actually another cool Iceman moment. Get it? Cool? Anyway, in the hangar scene, when Charlie reveals herself as an instructor, Maverick challenges her knowledge of MiGs based on his and Goose's personal experience. When asked how he saw a MiG up close, he says he was flying inverted, and Iceman instantly coughs an expletive about bovine manure, causing the class to chuckle. But did you know Val Kilmer improvised the moment? Everyone's reactions are genuine in that take. Speaking of genuine reactions, Top Gun was such a rousing success, especially with the military-aged male demographic. Did you know that the US Navy planted recruiting booths at major cinemas to try to catch some of the adrenaline-charged guys leaving the screenings? Sure, the ploy was obvious, but it led to the highest application rate the Navy had seen in a while as a result. 
Now that's what I call military intelligence. I hope you liked the video and found some cool new things to love about Top Gun. Make sure you subscribe to Movie Logic for more daily movie facts, trivia, and Easter eggs.